Today's lesson is Exploding Ooblick, brought to you by MathRhythm.com. Commonly called Ooblick, this is a non-Newtonian fluid, which means it behaves differently depending on how it is interacted with, or how it is stressed. If you interact with it quickly, it behaves like a solid. If you interact with it slowly, it flows like a fluid. If we place it into a balloon, we notice that when we interact with it slowly, it behaves like a water balloon. When we interact with it quickly, it behaves as something solid, similar to a baseball. This made us wonder, what would happen if we could interact with it very fast, say even faster than we're capable of moving, as fast as a speeding bullet? What would happen with it then? Would it behave even more like a solid? Would it act like a piece of concrete? Well, there was only one way we could think of to be moving that fast. Let's shoot it. Wow, that was really fast. If we replay that in slow-mo, we can see some really interesting physics happening here. In the short amount of time it takes for the bullet to pass through the balloon, the oblique inside the balloon goes from a liquid to a gel to a solid and then shatters. This shattering is so forceful that it creates a shockwave strong enough to compress the milk jug. The fluid inside the milk jug water is incompressible and has nowhere to go but to burst through the weakest point of the jug, the seam in the back. Here we can see it jettisoning out that seam. As that explosion continues and the shockwave continues to compress that milk jug, the water inside gets pushed out with even greater force, making that jettison of water even larger. As the energy dissipates a little bit further and the explosion expands further out, we begin to see the milk jug return back to its normal shape, and that jettison of water begins to be much less forceful than it was earlier. Finally, all of the energy from this interaction has dissipated, the milk jug is back in its original state, and that jettison of water is now no longer a jettison, it's just simply dribbling out the back under gravitational force. This time we're not shooting the balloon on a milk jug, but instead on a reactive target, which is essentially a rubber block designed to move when bullets hit it. However, we're not hitting the block with the bullet, we're hitting the balloon. The block is going to move simply because of the ejecta and the shock wave caused by the oblique. The force of the oblique causes the rubber block to compress in an asymmetrical or uneven way. As we can see here, the left rear corner of the block compresses almost all the way to the ground. Since this is not a natural state for the rubber block to be in, it rectifies the situation and bounces back into shape. It does so with so much force that it creates a torque on the block, similar to a gymnast beginning a tumbling routine. This provides not only the rotational energy needed to cause that tumbling motion we observe, but also the kinetic energy required to launch it into the air and achieve an incredible height, eventually losing that energy and crashing back to Earth. You may notice that the block doesn't fly nearly as high as it did in our last test. However, you might also notice that the balloon is sitting a little bit higher in that block than it was in the last test too. Therefore, less of its energy is directed down into the block and more out into the rest of the environment. Since the round did crater the backstop, and the ejecta is flying at about the same time that this occurs, it's difficult to decide which actually caused the milk jug to move. This round provides more than enough energy to stress the oblique enough for it to behave like a solid. However, once that energy is dissipated, there's no longer a need for the oblique to behave like a solid, and it begins to flow again like a liquid. While this round moves considerably slower than the other rounds, it's also significantly more massive than any of the other rounds. Also, because the round moves more slowly, it spends more time passing through the balloon interacting with the oblique. This may result in a higher transfer of energy from the round to the oblique, and may also explain why we see the oblique behave more like a solid than with any of the other rounds we've tested here so far today. You can see this in a slow motion video as the chunks of the oblique come flying off in the form of ejecta, hitting the foliage around it. You can also see that same ejecta laying on the ground still in a solid state. Most of the rounds we've tested here today fly like a solid, but by the time they've hit the ground they're already behaving like a liquid. If you found this video entertaining, informative, or both, you can find more videos like it at MathRhythm.com. If you enjoyed our video, please feel free to share it on social media. You can also subscribe to our official YouTube channel by clicking the link here to the left. If you'd like to provide financial support to our site, you can do so through our YouTube channel with the fan funding feature here to the right.